Dr. Fleck to be some kind of martyr. <laughs> Welcome into Box Office Quarterbacks. I'm Jeff. That's Ahmed. We're going to fight today. <laughs> we are talking about, uh, I wouldn't even call it a divisive movie. It seems like the overwhelming majority of critics and fans hate Joker Folly Ado with a venomous passion that I haven't seen uh, against a movie in a very long time. I went into this movie, Ahmed, thinking this was going to be the worst comic book movie I've ever seen. And honestly, I liked it a lot more than I was expecting. And I also think that some parts of this worked very well. You, however, have a difference of opinion. Yeah, um, because unlike you, Jeff, I don't like to watch paint dry. I don't like to see grass <laughs> grow. So I'm not surprised that you would like this movie. And you know what? I don't even think you can call yourself a comic book fan. Hey. Because, no, no, we're going to talk about this. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about this because you can't just use a comic book character's likeness if you're going to give the middle finger to comic book fans. here, Here's what I'll say about that. Does this work as a Joker movie? Do, do these two movies work as Joker movies? They don't. Because when it comes to the ending of this series, this isn't about the Joker we know at all. But as a character study of a man descending into madness. If you take away the Gotham stuff, you just look at the performance by Joaquin Phoenix. I, I think looking at, looking at that through that lens, it makes it a lot better. Uh, I will agree that it completely dropped the ball as far as tying this to Batman and tying this to the Joker that we all know and love. Sure. As, as a character study in terms of, uh, how one can descend into madness, how someone who's already troubled in and of themselves can descend into further psychopathy in the sense that like they will go and just see the world burn. You can't empathize with them. They're just beyond reproach, beyond redemption. But that's the problem with this movie is you could have done that with Joaquin Phoenix, but you didn't have to use that character as the Joker. You could have just had him play some ordinary dude who we felt sorry for, but the problem is somebody like Joker is not supposed to be likable. He's not, or in the sense that he's not supposed to be likable in the sense that you forget he's a serial killer, he's a monster, because that's what we've been talking about, Jeff. We've been talking about how a lot of movies seem to just focus on empathizing with the villain. Um, and we need to cut that shit out. Like there, sometimes there are two sides to every story, but not in every single one. Sometimes a spade is a spade, black is black, white is white, and that's a, that's just that. I just think that it is unfair to call this movie horrible. Like when the performances are so good, like Lady Gaga, I really loved in this movie, and honestly. As someone who hates musicals, like the only musical I've ever liked was La La Land. Uh, I was scared going into this that these musical numbers would, you know, be overwhelming. In some ways they are, but I do think a few of them did work. I think there were too many of them at the end of the day. Uh, I also think that they kind of held Lady Gaga back in a way where she wasn't showing off like her full vocal range. But... Um, if they would have done maybe two of these sequences in here to show like the love or the chaotic relationship between Harley and Joker, I thought that would have worked. But, uh, by the end of it, you know, um, Joker's on the phone with Harley singing to her at the end of the movie. And then at that point I was like, just let's just kind of talk about it at this point. Um, I feel that there's a lot of good ideas here. There's just too many ideas where do you want it to be a prison movie? Do you want it to be a courtroom drama or do you want it to be a musical? So in addition to that, I didn't like how, and, and full disclosure, I walked out of the theater, you know, I, I was just like, Nope, I can't do this. I, I don't care for musicals. And when I, when I could see just the, the intro sequence with the animation, I was just like, yeah, no, I can't do this. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. So. I thought that was like 
uh, a creative way to start the movie, though. Like I did love like the Looney Tunes music there and just so just showing that there are kind of split personalities here between Arthur and his other half, which is Joker. So I did like that animated sequence a lot, actually. But that's a th- and that and that but that's a thing is like I knew because I remember the first one so vividly in that it really made you feel sorry for this down on his luck, you know, guy. And if we got more of the killing joke, that type of story, I think Joaquin Phoenix could have done a good job. Hell, I think Joseph Gordon Levitt, who you know is somebody who is likable, but has a has a he he did this one movie called Hesher where he plays like a kind of a drifter but he's also like a frightening dude. I think I did see that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very underrated role of his, but I feel like Joseph Gordon-Levitt could capture that pathos of he's likable enough to where you still kind of like are like, "Oh yeah, that's still a fucking guy." You know what I mean? That cuz th- I was on board with the whole he was a failed comedian. But Joaquin Phoenix, because he's so good at making you feel depressed, just made us even more sad. And it just showed clinical depression. You know, we go to movies, especially comic book movies, to be entertained. And this sort of felt like a Requiem for a Dream style film. Requiem for a Dream is not the kind of movie I would watch again because it is that depressing. It is that shocking. But is it a good movie? Oh, absolutely. Because it talks about the reality of drug use. It's not also not a comic book movie. Yeah. (laughs) That's the problem nowadays with the IP thing where, you know, I think James Gunn, there was a quote was saying that, you know, DC studios before was handing out IP like candy and let creators do whatever they wanted with it. Uh, These two movies really and. I didn't like the first movie that much. I like this one better than the first movie, but there is no reason for them to exist with how this movie ends with this, not even being the Joker. This is Joker. And Todd Phillips did do an interview where he said, uh, well, in the title of these movies is called Joker, not the Joker. I was like, okay, that's kind of like a loophole you found to make yourself feel better about it. Fuck um, you. That's even worse. Fuck. See, now I'm even glad I left the theater because you're going to be like, oh, well, it's not like a no fucking gaslighting us. You knew what you were doing. And this is the thing. This is DC's version of Venom. If that's not, fair to say. It's no. like DC's version of Requiem for a Dream. No, hear me out. Because Venom serves what purpose? In the grander scheme of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nothing, honestly, at this point. And yet we've had three but movies. The, and the difference did. between Venom and this is Eddie Brock is Venom. And this is just some guy. So. And Tom Hardy made us like him. You know, I still haven't seen the second one because I heard it was so bad and I'm hesitating to see the third mm-hmm. one. It's very enjoyable. Like when you have Woody Harrelson playing Carnage, it's just, it's great. I think and Carnage is one of my favorite villains in the Marvel universe. But what's my point in all this? Marvel did it right in terms of making us in, in, in understanding what the, what the audiences would like. They really pay attention to their audiences. I don't think DC has done a great job of doing that. Or in this case, DC, you know, kind of whatever the fuck Todd Phillips' association with DC is. Because this is just unacceptable. You can't just gaslight people into making them see a movie. He edged the fuck out of this movie with the pro- with the promos casting Lady Gaga, someone who as talented as she is, and then not letting her have enough vocal range, as you mentioned, but also having her do a character that's completely different than the character she, that people like and know her for. I thought she was great as Harley though. Like she is my favorite part of this movie. Like she plays crazy in a different way that Margot Robbie plays crazy. And like, she's very manipulative as this Har- as Harley. And you find out at the end that she checked herself into Arkham to try to yeah, get she's close a fucking to hussy. She's, a, yeah. she's just as gaslighting as Todd Phillips. Yeah. And, and then there's an ending scene uh, where 
Joker and Harley break up on the stairs after the Joker escapes from prison. I love that scene. I uh, love the lighting there. It's the stairs from the first movie. Uh, th- but I will agree with you that this movie is a downer. Like, this is not a fun movie for, to watch. This is a guy, Arthur Fleck, who is beat down every single day. Like, the guards just talk crap to him all day long. What and the there's nothing to be mean? happy here. There's no humor whatsoever. There yeah. is a really great scene, though. It's when Joker fires his lawyer and he starts representing himself in court and he uh, does an interrogation of uh, Gary Puddles, who is uh, the the little person from the first movie. And he, yeah. you know, Gary just talks about how uh, you were the only guy that was ever nice to me. And after what you did, you are my nightmare now. And that was a great scene as well. So I think there's so many scenes here that I can't necessarily call it a disaster. Like it is not on that level for me. Jeff likes to be gaslit. That's his kink. (laughs) It's just too well made Hamid. Like the cinematography looks great. Lady Gaga is great. The guy who plays Harvey Dent. I really like it. It is. I I will say from the trailers and everything, the cinematography did look so good. I, I think if this wasn't advertised or led or misleading viewers to think they were watching something by DC. I think it could have been more enjoyable. I think it could have been more palatable, but in yeah. this regard, like, like penguin there may, when we talked about the penguin uh, show, it's like, okay, no, they're doing a, they're doing a, a way of retelling the story. It's obvious. It's a retelling. It's the same thing with the Batman as long as excruciatingly long as it was, it's a retelling of Batman focusing on him as a detective with Joker. We thought it was going to be his descent into madness only to come to find out. Oh, by the way, this isn't really the Joker. This is just Joaquin Phoenix. So that means every meme that exists right now needs to not include Joaquin Phoenix's likeness as Joker. That's what this means. That is what this means, according to Todd Phillips. I'm honestly more okay with him not being the real Joker because the thing that pissed me off the most about the first movie is he goes and visits Bruce Wayne, who is an eight-year-old kid at that point. And so I think the ending of this movie somewhat makes it a little bit the first movie a little better for me in that regard. But I know there's people that are like, Oh, you know, the, the guy who stabs him to death cuts a smile into his face. Is he Heath Ledger's Joker? He is not Heath Ledger's Joker. He like the time frames don't add up here. Like Harvey Dent is in this movie in 1981. Yeah. Uh, He would Harvey Dent would be like a 60 year old man in the dark Knight if that was the case. So I think that was more of a, a homage to, Heath Ledger as opposed to it being Heath Ledger. There's also a a story in the comics called uh, Batman, the three Jokers and the Joker ha- uh, was three different people throughout Batman's lifetime. And there was a mobster, a comedian and a psychopath. So that was the other reason why I was okay with the ending. That that's fair. And I think, Barry Eoe, I don't know how to say that. Keoghan, Barry Keoghan, Keoghan, yes. Keoghan, whatever his name is. Yeah. Yes. When I saw the deleted scene, I was haunted by it, but I also yeah. was like, wow. Because we keep going back to Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger. Why? Not because he he died for that role, but because he really brought that role to life. You can't re- it's hard to recapture that as hard as Jared Leto tried as hard as Joaquin Phoenix tried. There's just some roles that I think whenever you have been able to do such a great job portraying it, instead of trying to recapture it, why can't we just let it be? You know what I mean? Let's just go, let's try with something new. Maybe not that one. That's the reason I know we're, we're shifting gears here, but that's the reason why The Crow didn't do so well. Yeah. Talented actors, but Brandon Lee died for that role. 
he was really looking forward to doing that role. And, you know, as tragic as his passing was, when you do things like this and then it falls through the cracks like like this did, it makes you not appreciate the previous art. It, it, it waters it down. I do agree with you. I do think there is a huge issue with all the jokers we've gotten since the dark Knight. is they haven't fought Batman. Like, what are we doing? Like we got Jared Leto's Joker in the suicide squad. And not only did he dress like a SoundCloud rapper, that was stupid. He never fought Batman. Um, <laughs> and Joaquin Phoenix, not the real Joker never was ever going to fight Batman. But like the thing that made the Joker special in the comics was he is the ultimate foil to Batman. He is the opposite in every single way. They are meant to do this forever, as uh, Heath Ledger said at the end of The Dark Knight. But that's where we come into the villain origin stuff. Like, stop it. <laughs> I know you're yeah. trying to make money. Just stop doing it. Because that's the thing is DC clearly doesn't care about its fan base. And unfortunately, its fan base keeps on giving them another chance. Um I'm not a sports fan, but Gerald is the one who told me about this. The Minnesota Vikings can't kick a field goal to save their lives, but he still is a diehard fan because he keeps thinking that one day they're going to come back. And I, and I have heard they're doing well now, Yeah, but the same cannot be said about DC. DC is consistently tanking. And I never really cared to for them in the beginning because Marvel just – already sowed the seeds you can't it's hard to compete with marvel now now they're on a downward slope and dc if you just fucking played your cards right you could totally you know steal that that audience but you keep falling in the same trap and now that's why people are getting superhero fatigue and now they're getting villain origin fatigue yeah i just think that like batman is my favorite character of all time but marvel is the better uh comic book company because they have more likable characters like yeah. it's endless like spider-man captain america iron man like there's people that don't even really like superman and yeah. you know wonder woman's great but everyone's divisive on do they like green lantern like what's the deal here i uh, i think that dc uh in the beginning really tried to emulate marvel and that's where they went wrong and then they doubled down on uh these type of Joker movies and it worked out great for them. Honestly, yeah. the first movie Joaquin Phoenix won an Oscar. Do I think that that movie deserved to be nominated for all those movies or for those awards? I don't, but uh, they were always going to push for this sequel, which was a sequel to a movie that shouldn't have existed in the first place. So um, this movie, I think Ahmed, if we're going to go into our rankings, I were to look at it from a movie standpoint, I would give it a starter uh, because I love the cin cinematography. I love the performances. And I think there are some good ideas here. If I was going to judge it from a DC fan standpoint, I would bench this movie because uh, I can see why people are pissed off. But overall, I think I'm going to start it. I'm going to have to just cut it all together because Unfortunate, and, and this is unfortunate because not a lot of movies this year have really impressed me. The last movie that impressed me was Monkey Man. Mm -hmm. And that was just because it was like an original story. It was a great way of telling the story. And we're like almost done with 2024. And to say that only one movie has really impressed me is sad because we've had a lot of good stuff come out, a lot of, or a lot of, we just came off of a writer's strike. This should, this should be like when everybody is like killing it right now. But I mean, hell, Deadpool and Wolverine had low expectations. That was the only movie that I was, I actually saw four times. <laughs> yeah. That movie, like say what you want about Marvel. That's the perfect superhero movie. Like you wanted nostalgia. You wanted characters you loved. You got everything in there. You got humor. Like it's yeah. not a huge downer. Like I am going to like this movie more than I like the first one. I like the performances. I can see why people are pissed off though. I will say that. 
One last dig on DC and its comparison to Marvel. The thing, what I've noticed or what I'm what I'm predicting is DC thinks that because Marvel casted certain A-list actors to play certain roles, that's how it worked. No, what happened is you had A-list actors like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, uh, Chadwick Boseman to play these likable characters, but they were already likable actors. So it was it was a winning combination. Problem is you had shitty actors like Ezra Miller playing another shitty, dislikable character like The Flash. Who cares about The Flash? Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> Marvel, how they initially created their characters with Stan Lee, he wanted them to be more... Uh, like everyday people. And you see that with Spider-Man, like Spider-Man is a broke college kid. Like he is like, has this job that's like dead end. He's not getting any money from it. His girlfriend is um, like breaks up with him all the time. It, like this is a guy going through everyday struggles for he's DC. A real, he's a real dude. Like DC, like who can relate to Superman? It's like, you're good at everything, but you have to hold back. You wear glasses and no one knows who you are. Like no one can relate to this guy. Bruce Wayne, love Batman. Nobody is a billionaire that's reading these comic books. You're, you're so, not a billionaire with your yeah. with all your with your giant Funko Pop collection. Hey, not yet. In twenty years, Ahmed. <laughs> twenty twenty years. <laughs> these these things might be worth like a hundred dollars. Um, and and so for DC to have to go, oh, okay, we have to make them relatable. Well, everyone can relate to being down on their luck, struggling with depression. Yeah, we are aware of this. Help us get away from this. We're trying to not feel fucking depressed. We're trying to like, we are already a stressed out generation as it is. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well... You know, I love the Penguin. I love what they're doing there. Um, I love Matt Reeves' universe. And, you know, James Gunn comes out with Superman next year. So we'll see if everything gets back on track then. Um, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Jeff likes to watch grass grow. And <laughs> I stop. like the artistic qualities of this movie. I can appreciate it. You like the artistic it. quality of grass grow- growing and paint drying. This is a beautiful way to watch grass grow. You also like that 90s show, so you don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) R.I.P. R.I.P. that 90s show. Uh, Well, Ahmed, uh, we'll be back very soon with an episode I don't know yet. Uh, I'm Jeff. That's Ahmed. Uh, We'll see you guys soon.